Everyday Superhumans, the podcast to restore your faith in humanity. I'm Kyle. And I'm Charlie. And today is a really special guest of ours and also a very special topic, something that we haven't covered before. Yes, and I think everybody is affected by this topic too or knows somebody who's affected by the topic. So we're talking about cancer and Live Strong, Mm -hmm. the nonprofit that supports people with cancer going through a really tough time. Mm -hmm. They can really help navigate them and assist with them. I can't even imagine what it would be like if I had cancer. Yeah, I know. We actually spoke to a cancer survivor in this episode. Her name is Jenny Dalton, and Mike Threadgold, the digital marketing manager of Live Strong, also joined us. And they were really starting a conversation about how Live Strong empowers cancer patients mm-hmm. with their programs. Yeah, uh, they have programs such as the Live Strong Navigation Program, which helps people navigate their way through the craziness that is the American medical system, to Live Strong Fertility, which helps provide fertility support for people going through cancer, be it the drugs or the cancer itself can make you infertile. And then they have a bunch of other programs too. They're all on their website. I recommend looking at them. But we mostly spoke about one in particular in this episode which is the Live Strong at the YMCA program, which is dedicated to providing support and empowerment through physical fitness in like a communal atmosphere. Yep, because a lot of times people think, oh, I have cancer, I should rest. Mm-hmm. But Live Strong is changing that topic too, and that you can do light to moderate exercise. Mm-hmm. It's actually good for you to get those endorphins going and really change the, your mindset. And I don't want to get too spoilery about this, but Jenny did credit that program for helping her get through the rough times of her cancer. Overall, this interview was great. It was one of those interviews where I just didn't want to end because mm-hmm. Let's Try is just such a big organization and I yeah. wanted to talk to them about every aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And there's actually Live Strong Day is coming up yeah. this Friday. They have one every year. It's Friday, May 18th. It's also Bike to Work Day. And at the Live Strong headquarters, they'll be having events there in the morning and I believe breakfast tacos as well. It can't be Texas without breakfast <laughs> tacos. Yeah, it'd be illegal at that point. My name is Mike Threadgold. I am the digital marketing manager here at the Livestrong Foundation. I've been here for uh, about six years. And the foundation's been going since 1997. And it was set up originally just to as a fundraiser for providing services to, to other cancer organizations. But it very quickly became obvious that there were gaps that needed to be filled in cancer care and particularly in survivorship care through kind of listening to survivors and um, doing surveys with our community, identified some areas that we felt like we could provide services to and help them through that process. Um, And that then became uh, a range of programs that we provide both one-on-one support for people who are in cancer treatment right now or coming out of it to post-cancer resources like the Live Strong at the YMCA program. Basically, we've always kind of built our programs around gaps that we've identified. Okay. You, Jenny? My name's Jenny Dalton, and I am a survivor of colon cancer, colorectal cancer. And I got to know the Live Strong Foundation as a consequence of my illness and engaged with Live Strong in a number of different ways. One of which was the Live Strong at the Y program, which I totally love. And uh, so what was the first program that Live Strong offered then? That's a great question. <laughs> was it navigation services? I'm pretty sure. I wonder. I'm going to say, yeah, I would say that uh, telephone navigation was one of the very early things that we started, which I think was in the late 90s. And that was really just a service for people to call us and we could help guide them through the process. Wow. Obviously, uh, a cancer diagnosis comes with so many questions and particularly around finances. How am I going to pay for this? Um, you know, what's the impact of the the treatment going to be on, on my body and on my future and on the work? So we had a phone helpline that people could call and we would we would assist them through that. And I could actually really talk about that for a really long time. Yeah, can do it. So yeah. one <laughs> of the things that Live Strong really does is it kind of puts the picture together because the first thing that happens when you're diagnosed is that you're in shock. And 
that's literally what happened to me totally out of the blue mm. this is not unusual most people who are diagnosed with cancer many of them at least have zero symptoms it is a complete shock and you're just like oh my god what what's i you don't need, you don't know where to turn to you don't know where to go you have kind of quick decisions that are coming at you mm-hmm. that you have no idea how to make mm-hmm. there's a part of your mind that's saying like wait is this right do i need a second opinion what am i supposed to do they're telling me i need to do a b and c mm-hmm. and both firsthand from my own experience and even with my with my friends I've seen that as well where literally my friend who was just diagnosed with breast cancer within like literally that hour she was presented with three different things she needed to do right now Mm -hmm. that you're like wait I I need a minute I don't know what I'm doing Mm -hmm. and so live strong one of the things that you can do is you can call and you can speak to a navigator who can identify and at least just kind of give you an overview of these things and live strong connects you to different types of services that will help you and your family during that time to not only identify resources so I mean just on a really very top level kind of a thing I use navigate cancer there is another organization organization that's sponsored by Livestrong where mm-hmm. you could actually talk to a nurse practitioner who would mm-hmm. go through your care and you know and basically say here's the type of here's the standards for treating the kind of cancer that you have one of the things we can do is look at your treatment plan and make sure that it is actually matching up with what the latest and greatest is for what we're supposed to be doing for treatment one of the other things that actually was really helpful was Wonders and Worries, which is a local nonprofit that provides counseling for kids whose mm. parents are diagnosed with cancer, which my daughter was very fortunate to be able to take mm. part in. The finances is huge because you're yeah. like, I have no idea what to do at this point. I have no mm. idea what my insurance covers. Let's not even go into if you have no insurance, mm. but it's it's all of those things. And even if you're one of the fortunate people like me who has insurance, you will swiftly be overtaken by such a mountain of paper Mm -hmm. and such a mountain of things that you can't go through it alone. So I actually used that service as well and like literally came in with my files Mm -hmm. and put everything down on a table and said, my insurance company just told me that they won't cover me for my treatment at the place where I'm going. And so they're no longer a network for you. Mm -hmm. And this is like three months into my chemo that Mm -hmm. was going to be six months. So basically Mm. halfway through treatment, they're like, you're not in network anymore. Mm. And so these are the kinds of things where literally, A, you're sick. B, you have, like, you're not equipped to deal with this. And so you have to have some help. And that's really, I mean, whatever it is, that's what Livestrong did for me. It's just every time I turned a corner and went, I don't know what to do, there was literally somebody there who could help me to find it. And with Livestrong at the Y, which is actually, I think, what we're going to talk about, yeah. 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 that is not post-survivor care. I think an integral part of my treatment, because I started that when I was going through chemo, and I think that's what it helped me to get through that part of my treatment, which was really strenuous, and it was really difficult. And that was one of the essential pieces of support that helped me to not just get through the treatment, but actually like thrive and Mm -hmm. and do better and better as time went on. What does Live Strong at the Y do? Uh, the Live Strong at the Y program back in 2007. Um, it was a partnership that we entered into with the YMCA of the USA as a national organization. And it was really, as I said, from a gap that we'd identified mm-hmm. and we'd heard uh, again and again from patients and survivors saying, what I'm most worried about is how am I going to get back to my normal day-to-day mm-hmm. life after treatment? How am I going to feel like myself again? And so that partnership that we set up in 2007 has grown rapidly over the last 11 years. But essentially what it is, is a 12-week 
exercise and community program offered at local branches for classes of anywhere between five and 12 people. And they could be any stage really through either in treatment or post treatment. And it's a combination of a lot of things. It is strength and conditioning. So there is a little bit of exercise to it. But there's also very much a community aspect to it. Mm -hmm. There's a, a social support and they have sessions where they, you know, have share stories and and talk to each other and create kind of bonds around the experiences that they've all shared. So we're really excited by the stories that we hear coming out of the program. People really feel like it's changed their whole outlook on life after they've come through treatment um, and allows them to get back to doing even simple things like walking their daughter down the aisle when Mm. they're getting married or something like that, that they genuinely felt while they were in treatment that they might not be able to do because Mm. they were so weakened by the treatment. And the thing about chemo is it is literally poison, Mm -hmm. you know, and so part of it is it's interesting because Mm. it is targeted, but the fact that it's targeted at the cancer cells that are causing the problem doesn't mean that it's not affecting the rest of Mm. your body. Mm -hmm. Every chemo treatment is different. We speak about it as if it's like one blobby Mm. thing that's that's going to be the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. It isn't. So every cancer has a different type of drug that works more effectively uh, in Mm. terms of treatment. And some of them are different. They have different side effects. They have different effects on the body. But I can genuinely tell you that it is not never something that makes you really feel better. Mm. (laughs) You know, so some of them, for instance, the chemo drugs will make your hair fall out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes types of chemo will not you know really Mm -hmm. yeah because they're all different drugs there are different drugs Mm -hmm. that work in many many different ways and usually it's a combination of different drugs that are targeted for a specific type of cancer and chemo is that radiation treatment or is that separate radiation is completely different radiation is radiation like having x-rays okay okay yeah, pointed directly at yeah. there. So there are different ways to attack cancer. And uh, you're basically targeting cells and stopping, you know, hopefully either eradicating them or changing them in a way that they are not proliferating. Mm. So yeah. you're basically trying to stop a biological process. Mm-hmm. So typically cancer will have three different stages. Mm-hmm. You usually have some type of surgery. You can have radiation either before or after. And typically, mm-hmm. for instance, in my type of cancer, the radiation was very targeted mm-hmm. at the tumor to reduce the size of the tumor prior to surgery. Mm-hmm. Oh. But that's not oh. always the case. But so radiation, it's like a one-two punch. Mm-hmm. So I had radiation, then I had surgery, and then I had chemotherapy. Huh. Is it usually different orders for different people and different It cancers? can be. Okay. It mm-hmm. totally can be. But those are just the different ways that you can target it. Okay. Can sometimes you just have radiation and not have to have Correct. the surgery? The radiation clears out? So typically, it depends on what the staging of the cancer is. And staging is just a fancy way of saying, like, how far is it? Mm -hmm. And so radiation is very effective, for instance, in reducing the size of a tumor and perhaps even being able to eradicate it. So in breast cancer, for instance, if it's not in the lymph node, you may be able to have just a localized surgery that excises that tumor and radiation to kind of seal the deal, if you will. Mm -hmm. But if it's in the lymph nodes, because that's kind of how cancer will spread. It'll go from the lymph nodes and kind of go through other to other parts of the body. Mm. You can travel that way. Mm-hmm. But if it's localized, meaning it hasn't spread anywhere outside of that area, then radiation and perhaps surgery can be really effective. And you're a nurse too, as your I day job. <laughs> so you, I bet I can't even imagine knowing about what's going on with your body in a nurse It does way. not help you. I promise <laughs> I bet you. It's it... totally not not helpful. You were in yeah. nursing school when you were I diagnosed. I was in nursing right? school. Oh, I was actually school? just mm-hmm. about finished. I was at Johns Hopkins. I was finishing my program. I was like one month away from graduating oh, when no. I was diagnosed. It was actually mm-hmm. wonderful. You know, I have to say that because... I was able to finish and I was doing um, my last stage where you actually are in a hospital and working and I got to be in a medical ICU and for that last month prior to and 
it was an amazing experience. You really don't have time to feel sorry for yourself mm. or to focus mm. on your own mm. stuff because you're dealing with really, that was a gift. I really felt like that was a gift. It helped me to put what was happening to me in perspective. And I was able to feel like I was still useful, that I was still me, that I was mm. still able to put something into the world, that mm. I wasn't just like, oh, but back to chemotherapy. Yeah. So chemo is different for everybody, but it generally makes you feel lousy. Mm -hmm. It is a myth that it will make you not be able to eat. For some people, it does. Mm -hmm. Typically, you get very nauseated by those drugs, but there are mm -hmm. other drugs that will help you to get over that. But it is very tiring. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that and it's really counterintuitive that you would want to do exercise when you feel mm -hmm. like you're really not wanting to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. But the more time you spend in bed, the more deconditioned you become, mm -hmm. the worse you will feel. Mm -hmm. And so if you can just sell it to people, if you can just like get them to be like, yes, we're going to go and do exercise. I know you don't feel like getting up, yeah. but it's going to make it's, you feel better. It's like a persuasive marketing yeah. challenge in a it way. Is. It is. It's all a mental mindset too. Yeah. And I think it, we've always faced the old school mindset back in the, even as recently as the 90s and, and early 2000s. The, the recommendation was, oh, you're in treatment, take it easy. You know, oh, no. don't, you know, don't mm -hmm. overstrain yourself. Don't, mm -hmm. you don't want to really put yourself through more. Your body's already fighting against all of these other things that it's having to deal with. And I think the YMCA program that, that we helped to create really changed that mindset to say, no, doing moderate light exercise is really going to help your through treatment and also after treatment. And that was also around the time that there were more and more studies coming out that were saying, yes, actually, this is beneficial. Not only will you regain strength quicker, you'll feel better, um, it'll improve your quality of life. We really were trying to push this new way of thinking. And even as recently as last week, the Australian Society of Oncologists put out a, a sort of press release saying they recommend that exercise is almost prescribed to people <laughs> who are in treatment, that really, when you're in treatment, you should be exercising. It's is, going to make a dramatic difference to you. Is it more of a psychological difference or does it actually change the actual like healing process? It's both. It's both? I mean, it's definitely both. Because if you think about it, when you're exercising, there's two things. I mean, it's really mm -hmm. easy. So from the psychological perspective, it's really easy to become isolated. It's mm -hmm. really easy to be, to feel, you know, unique and mm -hmm. to be lonely because your life has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not working. It is a change and mm -hmm. it's a very bad change. It's mm -hmm. not like a good thing. Mm -hmm. And so when you actually have to get out of the house, when you're with other people, and especially being with other people who mm -hmm. have cancer, who either are facing or have faced the same challenges mm -hmm. and are able to, and you see other people and they're doing well and mm -hmm. you're together, there's kind of a, a symbiotic sort mm -hmm. of that both it does help your mental outlook because this kind of just makes sense. Mm -hmm. If you are sitting at home on your own and focused only on what's going on with you, that is very overwhelming. It, mm -hmm. it, is, it, it is very difficult. But if you get out and if, if you're able to see other people and see other people that are facing the same thing and are moving through it and succeeding, that is really helpful. I know. I always have to get out of my head when yeah, I have a major absolutely. life item mm -hmm. happen. Because my brain is my worst nightmare sometimes. Yeah. It's like a hamster wheel keeps on moving around, thinking about all the possible outcomes. And especially with a health-related item, trying to future-seek is probably the worst thing that you can do. And I think that's a really important part of the, the YMCA program, that you're in a group of people who are at all stages of their mm -hmm. treatment. You know, you, you may have people who are five years out of treatment mm -hmm. and they are still, you know, recovering in, in ways, but they've been through what you've been through or they've had similar treatment regimes that they've been through and they're on the other side of it. And you can see that in that group of people that, you know, everyone's dealing with it in their own way, but we're all moving towards the same goal. And I think that's a really powerful part of the program. And the exercise is actually kind of a big deal. The programs they're offered i think like quarterly there's probably four or it so varies a year. By branch, yeah. yeah but i remember waiting for it to start because i was really waiting <laughs> yeah. and i'd signed up and i mm. had to wait and the first day you get there there's first of all they have cancer certified personal 
trainers that work mm-hmm. with you. They're wonderful. And you usually have, I don't know if it's changed, but we had a yoga instructor and we had a sort of fitness instructor. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing you do is you do an assessment and you can be anywhere on that spectrum and whatever it is, wherever you are, we, they identify it and you start there. And then it's twice a week and you go in and you have about 40 minutes of sort of strength and cardio and use weights. And then you have like 30 to 40 minutes of yoga, which is just Mm. wonderful. And then there are days, there are special sort of days when maybe you have somebody who comes in who has special information. So a Mm. lymphedema specialist or someone who does acupuncture specifically Mm. for certain things. You can Uh. get a lot of, there are different side effects from chemo that have to do with neuropathy, Mm -hmm. lymphedema, a lot of different conditions that are actually a reaction to those cancer drugs. And so these are people who specialize in treatment. And so Mm -hmm. it's a way of like finding out about different therapies. But most of the time you go in there and you are working out and it is awesome. Yeah. And you just want to feel normal again. You feel You just feel normal. And you can, you know, (laughs) and the thing is you can develop at any point in your life. I mean, Mm -hmm. they, if you're 90 years old, you can still build muscle. Mm -hmm. Even if you're going through Mm -hmm. chemo, Mm -hmm. you can build muscle and you can see from week to week that especially because anybody, if you're going to the gym twice Mm -hmm. a week, eventually you're going to see that you're getting better at this stuff Mm -hmm. and you're feeling better Mm -hmm. and you're looking forward to going Mm -hmm. and maybe you make kind of a friend there Mm -hmm. or you're like oh this person's really cool I love hanging out with Mm -hmm. them or you like the little meditation part of the yoga (laughs) session at the end and you're like oh I feel so much better and I think it's um, the point you raise about the fact that you know certified instructors who mm-hmm. understand what uh, cancer does to a person what it takes away and what special considerations they might need to take when they're getting back into mm-hmm. to an exercise regime and I think that's getting people to start at the right level and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. take it slow and build up the goals that they're really setting for themselves that's a powerful part of how the program really is unique for each person and they get real benefit out of it you were saying earlier that chemo treatment makes you feel lethargic and lazy How did you go from feeling like that way to like saying, hey, I want to work out with all these cancer survivors? What pushed you over the edge to join the program? I went from being like somebody who smoked and did yoga once Mm -hmm. in a while. I mean, Mm -hmm. I just was a smoker. I love to smoke. Mm -hmm. And before it was so hard to smoke. And I did yoga (laughs) casually, but not I just was not an athletic person Mm -hmm. too when I when I was pregnant and about you know and was like oh god I'm gonna have a child I need to quit smoking I need Mm -hmm. to do something so I became a runner at that time and I quit smoking and I basically started running because I knew if I didn't do something really different I would keep smoking forever Mm -hmm. and once I started actually exercising on a regular basis, I realized that whatever it was doing for me physically, it was really emotional and, and psychologically mm-hmm. is where I was getting the benefit. So I went from somebody who tended to kind of be a little obsessive, kind of compulsive, mm-hmm. very perfectionistic mm-hmm. to somebody who was able to actually manage a lot of my, I, my stress level really went down. Yeah. I mean, that's really it, that I found that I could go for a run and feel better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even if I never liked running, I liked having run. At the end, I always feel better. I know that feeling. If I'm stressed out, I will run so much. Like it's just the ultimate relief. So you were doing this before the cancer diagnosis then? And so so at that point, I'd already sort of in my mind as a late bloomer, I Mm -hmm. had put together that exercise equals feeling better. Mm -hmm. Feeling better, not just in your body, which is a tremendous gift, but feeling better in your mind, in your heart, Mm -hmm. being a lot nicer to people. (laughs) And then it's about self care, too. It It allows you to take because everybody needs self care. And a lot of people don't even realize that. Yeah. And it's like, I think we try to do it with so many other things. We medicate ourselves with Mm -hmm. many things we drink, Mm -hmm. we smoke, or Mm -hmm. I'm not even talking about the harmful stuff. Yeah, I'm just talking like a little 
donut here, a little yeah. comfort eating, which yeah. can be so wonderful. But at the end, you don't really feel better. And I think that's kind of the difference. Exercise might not feel so super great while you're doing it, but at the end, you're going to feel better. So I'd already mm-hmm. made that connection, which I think I was so lucky. And I happened to see a little flyer at Texas Oncology, which is where I went to get my infusion therapy, my mm-hmm. chemotherapy. I went there every Wednesday, every other week mm-hmm. for six months, and I would leave with a little pump. So I had to go back on Fridays to get unhooked. So mm-hmm. I went there a lot. And there were these little flyers for the mm-hmm. Livestrong. I, I saw it at my doctor's office and it said, you know, Livestrong at the YMCA. And I'm like, oh, this is exercise for people with cancer. <laughs> How fascinating. Was this before or after you started using the navigation program? This is actually kind of concurrently. Okay. It okay. just wasn't something I even knew about. Because yeah. mm-hmm. that's the thing. I mean, Livestrong is truly a multi-splendor mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. There's like a lot of pieces that you don't necessarily know about. Literally a little piece of like that, like a little cardboard thing and it said live strong at the Y and I'm like A I have a Y membership it's mm-hmm. right there but you don't even need one because oh, they provide it yeah. yeah no it's totally free of charge? Oh, everything right. that live strong does is free of charge wow. oh. everything so everything whether it's live strong at the Y you get a membership during the time that you're there and for that length of you can just you can just go mm-hmm. but that's part of the beauty of it it's accessible to everyone and for many many people that's a real barrier so you can't you know if you don't have to think about paying for one more thing that's a real important piece yeah and we always saw that survivors are dealing with so many financial issues as it is that we wanted to our services have always provided to lessen that burden and not try to add to it and it does vary a little bit based on some of the branches nationally but that initial 12 weeks is always little to no cost or free and sometimes they will also have uh, follow-on programs that they can take part in um, that the Y is actually providing for them so it's always been one of my favorite programs that we provide yeah it seems like a great program especially like exercise like you're saying like it's just good for the mind. There's tons of programs you offer. Can, mm-hmm. Like, how big is the list? Is are we talking like like fifty? We would say there are four key areas okay. that we help with. The other one of the other big things is fertility, which I've mentioned earlier. I found that um, one really fascinating. I read that one. I read the most about that mm-hmm. on the website. I had no idea about this service. Mm-hmm. So it's a really um, huge need out there, and there's not really many services that are providing what we provide. Ours is pretty unique in terms of we will kick in immediately when someone is diagnosed to help them preserve their fertility. This is both for males and females. I was going to say, actually, I, because I think particularly Particularly because of the Livestrong piece of it, where it was primarily testicular cancer. Mm -hmm. And so I think Mm -hmm. most people think of it as being just a male Mm -hmm. thing. But one of the women that was actually in the group that I was in with Livestrong at the Y, breast cancer survivor, and Mm -hmm. she was able, she and her partner took part in the fertility preservation piece because they wanted to have Mm -hmm. children afterwards. Mm -hmm. And that radiation and the chemotherapy, it is really not... You know, um, a lot of cancer services are for older people or they're for kids. And the mm-hmm. adolescents and young adults have always uh, sat in this kind of gray area in between that people don't expect teenagers yeah. to get cancer yeah. and they don't understand that when you're at that growth period or you're going through puberty or you're in your late teens early 20s chemo and radiation can have a very dramatic effect on your fertility so taking steps really early to preserve that fertility is really important can like lifelong infertility happen because of the radiation well heck yeah absolutely yeah so true story and luckily i'm in the group of people who i'd already had a child Mm. and i just by choice my husband and i had decided that we were we were mm. good with one. She was a good one. You know, <laughs> okay. We're like, okay, we're good. But so I had high dose radiation therapy. I was actually in a clinical study, but any radiation bearing mm. in mind. So colorectal, it's that mm. area, right? Mm-hmm. So here we are. It's so I was diagnosed June 17th. I had my last radiation treatment in the middle of July. And towards the end of July, I made a little phone call to my doctor who's back in Baltimore or actually to one of his nurses. And I was like, hmm, I have not had a period. Uh And she said, oh, didn't they tell you? And you know that when you hear those words from a medical professional, it's just not good. (laughs) It was like, it never occurred to me Mm -hmm. that that would actually Mm -hmm. be an issue. And it was like, no, you're done. Your ovaries just get knocked out. In certain cases, if you're a younger woman, 
perhaps that could return, but it's definitely like... And not only that, it's not mm. just the chemo and radiation, but for instance, if you have ovarian cancer, yep, there if you, you have go. testicular yeah. cancer, they may have to remove one or both of the testes. So those are really dramatic impact. With radiation, it can impact it and there's various levels based on the dose. But mm -hmm. um, certainly with surgery, you may know straight away that that mm -hmm. may be not in your future. So. The Live Strong at the YMCA program is what we would really refer to as our major community program in terms of we are across the country in 666 communities across the states. 666. That was the latest number. Maybe I think you it's need actually gone another one there. I know. Uh, well, we've actually made a commitment this year to add 10 to 20 new branches. Okay. So okay. Perfect. It should be, by the end of this year, it'll definitely Good, not please. be 666. Um, we also have our advocacy and our Live Strong Leader program, which we We have volunteers who are other strong leaders across the country and around the world, in fact, who do advocacy work and spread our mission uh, around the rights of survivors and the needs that they have. And our sort of fourth and probably biggest and growing very rapidly is our partnership with the Dell Medical School. So two or three years ago, we partnered with them to create what will be the Live Strong Cancer Institutes that already exists and is growing rapidly right now. And that is being created at the Dell Medical School to provide really a world-class cancer research and care facility as part of the growth and expansion of the Dell Medical School. It's an interesting place to visit right now because there's sort of five or six staff, but they have the labs built out. So they have these big Ooh. research labs that only have a couple of people in, but they're recruiting very rapidly and adding people into it all the time. And uh, there's been some really interesting grants and research outcomes coming out of them already that's really bringing together the research that was already happening at, mm -hmm. at UT, but giving it a more of a coordinated approach with the Livestrong Cancer Institute at the center of it, kind of driving how that is helping bring cancer to a more patient-focused approach. So you all cover it all. We're yeah, the we're pretty we're pretty spread out. Aspect, yeah, and um, exercise. We've done education. Mention education. Um, one of our other sort of lesser-known programs is Live Strong at School program, oh, which is actually oh. a curriculum that was created alongside Scholastic, which is one of the mm -hmm. big K through um, twelve providers. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so we created this curriculum, which is used by uh, teachers uh, in K through twelve to help help teach their kids about cancer and the effects that it has and how to support people who are facing cancer. And that's a, you know, really fascinating area for really changing the conversation and making people aware of the unique challenges that people face when they're mm -hmm. going through that. As a parent, how do you even mention that to your kid without terrifying them or making them worried? You're always going to terrify them. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there's not But I think I, I did not know about that program at all. And that's a wonderful thing because I think it is. You know, I think at the time when I was diagnosed, my daughter shortly after that was starting in sixth grade and her teacher then, her sister to whom she was very close was actually in the process of dying from mm -hmm. ovarian cancer. I think it was ovarian cancer. And for my daughter, for Ione, it was wonderful in a way, to be able to have someone who understood so well what she mm -hmm. was going through, and she was able to talk to and share that together. But primarily, anytime you mention cancer to a child, what they think of is your, their parent is dying. And it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been a real effort that, that Livestrong has made to change that conversation in terms of providing hope and sharing stories mm -hmm. of people who have gone through um, and come out the other side and, and have thrived after cancer. Mm -hmm. And I think the Live Strong at School curriculum is really based around educating people and empowering kids mm -hmm. to understand that. Even, you know, as when I was in my early teens and dealing with a family member who had cancer, I had no idea. I assumed it was, uh, you know, a death sentence. And you, you don't know how to react in those situations, mm -hmm. especially when, you, you know, you're emotionally young and and don't know what that's going to mean for a family. And I think you're providing that information and, and empowering people with the knowledge that there are things that can be done to help go through those journeys, that that's a really powerful part of that program. It seems like that's the main philosophy of Live Strong, too, just empowering everybody about cancer, maybe the survivors 
or the family of the survivors our manifesto which is at least i don't know 10 years old now has always started out as that knowledge is power that really we want to empower survivors to ask for a second opinion to ask for mm-hmm. a third opinion there's always been a sense you know in the old days that you just do what your doctor tells you to mm-hmm. that they know best the first person who tells you what they want that you're just going to do that and that uh, has been a real mental shift that we've tried to make that there are other options you don't have to sacrifice you know your health for the treatment that you go through if there might be another way around you need to have a conversation with your doctor about what it is you care about i mean if your values going through treatment are well i just want to be able to continue to do exercise or work or um, make my way through that then there's ways that they can adapt to your treatment or they may be clinical trials that they can help you find to be able to maintain the quality of life that you want to attain Um, and i think that's really a change that we've we've been pushing for for a long time that make it a conversation make it about what you care about as a patient um, not just about well let's just kill the cancer and Mm. forget about the rest of your life we just want to do what it takes to to kill the cancer right now and it doesn't matter that you're going to be you know totally destroyed at Mm -hmm. the end of it And, and it is true it's a shift in attitude it's in terms of being able to say i'm going to learn about this and i'm going to take control of it whether it's by choosing what sort of treatment i have and one of the people who really helped me to see that was actually someone who told me about a lot of the other programs that Live Strong did, who, of course, I met at the Y, Mm -hmm. who was an alumni of the Live Strong at the Y. And it was amazing. Sometimes these things just happen where you're like, oh, I can't believe I ran into this person who told me the exact thing I needed to know right at that right time. But that's what happened. And it was uh, someone I actually knew. His kids had gone to the same preschool as my daughter. We were both coming Coming into or out of a yoga class, I can't remember which, and he'd had stage four lung cancer that he'd mm. been diagnosed with, which was essentially a death sentence. Mm. And because of Live Strong, he got uh, through Navigate Cancer and through a bunch of other resources, but basically uh, mm-hmm. was t- had other options available to him. Was still living five years after the diagnosis and mm. raising his kids. And he he said, I'll never forget this. And I wish I could do it the way he did it. But he basically said, you know, when I see my doctor, I look at it like I'm the chairman of the board <laughs> and they are my board of directors. <laughs> and that is how and, and literally that was mm-hmm. like eye opening to me. I'm like, oh, oh, tell me more about this. <laughs> you know, it's like but it was just that shift in thinking of like. You're here to educate me. You are here to tell me what my options are. And then I, but I am the CEO. I will then direct my Mm. care based upon the information that you're, that you're presenting me and the options that I have, but I will uh, avail myself of those first. You know, I want to know what my options are. And that is something that has changed. It's that sense of being empowered, of not being a victim. Mm -hmm. And that's huge because that really can change. It changes the balance. You go from being like having things done to you to actually being the actor Mm -hmm. in your own story of being the person who actually says i choose to do this i am choosing and by choosing you're taking power and control over your life again Mm -hmm. and that's huge because you lose all of that when you know you go from that shock to the Mm -hmm. kind of just uh and when you can take control of your over your life again that's Mm -hmm. a good feeling yeah all right is uh since we're everyday superhumans what superhero would live strong be or what superhero would you be I might be super nurse. I'd like super to be nurse. super nurse. But yeah. I, my secret superpower would be that I could just cure you immediately. <laughs> yeah. That would be That'd great. Be I always That'd say I wish that I had a little magic wand. I would just yeah. have, I would be a superhero, super nurse with a magic wand that could just immediately, like, I could just fix you. Mm-hmm. That would be wonderful. That would be the best. Great. That would. That'd be cool. Any that's her love drawing? But yeah, I think anybody that is able to impart knowledge to make people's lives better, to be able to help them deal with those challenges. Um, I can't think of a superhero Super that actually teacher. does that. That yeah. exists right now. Own, but like, yeah, live I can strong, make one up. Live strong, man. <laughs> Dr. Livestrong. Dr. Yeah, Livestrong. Dr. 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 Livestrong. Livestrong. Knowledge is power. You can find programs through Livestrong at Livestrong.org that empowers people affected by cancer as well as their family members. Livestrong can be found 
on facebook.com slash livestrong and also on twitter and instagram at livestrong you can also check them out on youtube where you can find inspiring stories from cancer survivors like jenny at youtube.com slash user slash livestrong army looking for some inspiring news to add to your life well we can help you with that Restore your faith in humanity at everydaysuperhumans.com where you can learn all about the people making a world a better place and find your calling. While you're there, check out our Find Your Cause quiz to find a non and charity just right for you. You can also subscribe to our monthly newsletter to get a little dose of superhuman news and charity opportunities happening right here in Austin. And finally, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at SuperhumansCast. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash everyday superhumans and check out our Instagram at everyday superhumans. Have we restored your faith in humanity? Then be sure to rate and subscribe to Everyday Superhumans on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podcast Attic, or wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, not every hero has to fly. So grab your cape and let's go. Looking for some good and inspiring news to add to your life? Well, we can help you. Help you. <laughs> well, we can help. I just have to say it again. <laughs>